Well, hello everybody and welcome back to the Mission Log. I'm very, very glad that you're here, whether you've been with me since the beginning or for a few weeks. And a special welcome to those who are tuning in for the first time. And for those folks, what we're doing is we're going through every Star Trek adventure ever filmed, right from the original series, through all the movies and other series, right up until the present time. It's going to take us many years to go through them all. I hope that you'll join me on this. I wonder if you would uh, help me out by going ahead and clicking that subscribe button. It will really help this channel out immensely. Also, you can connect with me on Instagram at Trek Mission Log, and we can interact with each other on there. Now, today I am going to be reviewing the original series, Season 1, Episode 9, titled Dagger of the Mind. It aired on November the 3rd, 1966. The episode was written by S. Bar David, directed by Vincent McAviti, and was produced by the series creator Gene Roddenberry. So, without any further ado, let's dive into this story. The Enterprise enters into orbit around planet Tantalus V. They are beaming down medication and metal equipment for the penal colony on this planet. After that is beamed down, a box of classified material is beamed aboard the Enterprise, which they will be taking to another planet. Now, after the transport is completed, the transporter, uh, one of the transporter team members leaves, the other turns around to check circuits, and we see a man rising out of the box that has just beamed aboard and he sneaks up on the transporter crew member. With a very powerful karate chop that would put Chuck Norris to shame, he knocks out the transporter operator and is now loose on the ship. And then we fade into the title sequence. Now, as the Enterprise is off to its next destination, they get a signal from Tantalus V that one of their inmates is missing, possibly beamed up inside of the box. Kirk orders a security alert. One of the crew finds the inmate and then he runs away. Now, not only does this inmate have a powerful karate chop, he can also choke somebody unconscious in less than two seconds. Absolutely magnificent. <laughs> and, uh, and then the inmate steals a phaser. Kirk is in communication with the leading psychiatrist on Tantalus V named Dr. Adams. Adams warns Kirk that this inmate is very dangerous, and so a ship-wide search is put in motion for this inmate. Now, at this point, McCoy goes over to Spock because Spock has a kind of a strange look on his face, and when McCoy gets there, Spock says to him, interesting, you earth people glorify organized violence for 40 centuries, but you imprison those who employ it privately. And McCoy said, oh, and of course your people found an answer? <laughs> and Spock responded, we dispose of emotion, and when there's no emotion, there's no motive for violence. I have to say that the point for the argument goes to Spock on that one. But I love the arguments uh, between Spock and McCoy throughout the series and the movies. It is the stuff of legends. I love it. Now the inmate comes on the bridge and he knocks a security guard out with his powerful karate chop. And then he demands to see the captain. And he appears to be suffering. He says that his name is Simon Van Gelder and he requests asylum and that he refuses to go back down to, the, to Tantalus. Spock subdues him with a Vulcan nerve pinch. Kirk orders him to be taken to sickbay and then orders the ship to turn back and go to Tantalus. In sickbay, the medical readings indicate lots of trauma and tissue damage inside this inmate. They had to give him a triple dose of sedative just to calm him down. Kirk asks him his name again and he can't get it out without intense pain. 
but he said his name was Simon and that the people on the planet took away his memories. Spock is researching the name Simon Van Gelder and finds out that he is a doctor and was assigned to Tantalus V as Dr. Adams' associate. Kirk then communicates with Adams and Adams said that indeed he was a doctor in the penal colony and said that Van Gelder had been doing exp uh, experimental work to rehabilitate prisoners and that it went wrong. McCoy comes in and says that it's not entirely true and he files that in his medical log and so Kirk now has no choice uh, but to conduct an independent investigation. And so he orders McCoy to find a psychiatrist to assist Kirk. Dr. Adams openly invites him down to the planet. Now as the ship approaches Tantalus V, Dr. Van Gelder is still violently agitated. From sick, boy, from sick bay, McCoy informs the captain that he found a psychiatrist for him, Dr. Noel, and that uh, she is going to beam down to the planet with Kirk. Now, it is awkward for them both because he and Dr. Noel had a romantic encounter on the ships uh, uh, during the ship's Christmas party, which uh, she mentioned quietly to him on the transporter pad. They beam down to the planet. On the planet, they unwittingly enter into a turbo lift that moves at an incredible speed well below the planet's surface. Finally, they meet Dr. Adams. Now, Adams introduces them to a young lady who was rehabilitated there and then remained on as a therapist. This lady, through her entire uh, speech, uh, has a blank look on her face with absolutely zero emotion. Kirk questions her about her crimes, and Adam says that the first part of their therapy is helping them to forget their past. Kirk and Dr. Noel are given a tour of the facility, we see people walking the hallways with empty looks on their faces. Some of them almost look like they're high. They stop by a room, and when Kirk asked about it, Adam said that there's a failed experiment in there, but Kirk really wants to see it. On the ship, Van Gelder, in his violent agitation, mentioned something called a neuro neutralizer. He mentions that it's in a room. Could it possibly be the same room that Kirk and Noel are presently in? <laughs> well, indeed it is. And Adam says that it helps to relax the patients, but other than that, it really isn't any good. And so the obvious question that Kirk asks then, if it's not any good, why are they still using it? And Adam says that they only use it for extremely violent cases. Adams then gives some insight into Van Gelder's condition and said that Van Gelder put himself in the machine at full volume all alone and that is what has caused his injuries. Now as they leave, the man operating the neuro neutralizer speaks instructions into a microphone and the inmate appears to be suffering very, very badly. In communication with Kirk, Spock mentions the neuro neutralizer and Van Gelder mentions that Kirk is in grave danger. Kirk told Spock that they were planning on spending the night. Van Gelder said to Spock if, if Kirk spends the night down there that Adams would kill him. Now something very significant happens next which becomes uh, important for the whole Star Trek series. This is the very first time that we see a Vulcan mind meld. Now this evolves of course over time but this is the very first one and it is a huge scene brilliantly acted and portrayed by Leonard Nimoy. As it is taking place Kirk asks Noel to accompany him to the neural neutralizer 
to get a closer look at it. Now, as the mind meld progresses, Spock gets the information that he needs from Van Gelder. It came out that Dr. Adams can reshape any mind he chooses and that he used the machine to erase Van Gelder's memories and replace them with his own thoughts. And then he goes on to explain the agony of having your mind wiped. Now on the planet, Kirk decides to test the machine and has Noel operate it. She said that they would try minimum intensity for one or two seconds. Now his face went blank for that time. He said to her to try a harmless suggestion. And so she operated the machine again and suggested that Kirk is hungry. When she shut it off, indeed, Kirk was very hungry. Kirk said that this machine is very effective for something that doesn't work well. They do another test. And this time, Noel puts a different idea in his head about their romantic encounter. We see this played out on his head. It is Kirk's third on-screen kiss. We then see Kirk uh, in the chair smiling with a false memory put in his head. Adam comes in and his assistant subdues Noel. Adams is now putting thoughts in Kirk's head about him being madly in love with Noel. He then orders Kirk to drop his phaser. He also orders Kirk to drop the communicator. Kirk fights it and tries to communicate with the ship, but Adams increases the pain and we see that uh, it increases the intensity and we see that Kirk is in brutal, brutal pain. We see Kirk in his quarters on the planet and Dr. Noel is helping him. Now after his mind was altered, he proclaims his love for her. She tries to get him to remember the truth. He remembers and he sends Noel through the air ducts to go to the control room to shut down the power. After she does that, Adam's men come to get Kirk to go back to the machine. Kirk is placed in the chair and his mind is being altered again by Dr. Adams. Noel makes it successfully to the control room and evades Adam's security team and she succeeds in shutting down the power. And with the neural neutralizer shut down, Kirk fights off the assistant and gives Dr. Adams a very powerful Shatner chop. Look at the pain on Adams' face after that powerful karate chop. <laughs> and then Spock beams down. Spock eliminates the force field around the planet. And in the neural neutralizer, Adams wakes up after being unconscious. And the machine powers back up on full intensity and it effectively kills Dr. Adams. Kirk, Noel, McCoy, and Spock find him dead on the floor. Safely back on the ship, Kirk enters the bridge. He's clearly troubled by his experience in the neural neutralizer. Dr. Van Gelder beamed back down. He dismantled and destroyed that machine. Kirk gathers himself and orders that the ship leave orbit at warp one. This episode is very, very busy. There's a lot going on here. The episode is exploring the idea of mind control, particularly on prisoners. Now the subject of mind control is very disturbing to think about. Uh, I believe that this episode was definitely predicated on the fears of the American populace in those days during the Cold War. In fact, both uh, the US and the USSR were exp experimenting with powerful drugs such as LSD to exert mind control. So this would have been an issue on the hearts of the people in that time period in 1966. We see a very distraught individual in Simon Van Gelder, portrayed uh, by actor Morgan Woodward. I felt that although his performance was just a little over the top, when portraying the terror of having his mind tampered with, he, he portrayed it brilliantly. His eyes, 
uh, exuberated uh, terror. Very, very believable. Another aspect of this episode that I really enjoyed was McCoy's conviction to stand up for what he thought was right. He felt that there was something off about Dr. Adams and even though Kirk tried to convince him otherwise, he stuck to that conviction and it turned out that he was right. So McCoy became the unsung hero of this episode. I also felt that William Shatner did a fantastic job portraying the torture of having your mind tampered with. I really enjoyed that. But the thing that stood out the most to me was the Vulcan mind meld. The very, very first time that we see this on screen. And although it has changed a lot on screen over the years, this was powerful. And it really had a profound impact on the entire series. Leonard Nimoy and Morgan Woodward acted this out brilliantly. Interesting watching this mind meld, you see not only do their minds become united, Spock actually takes on some of the emotional turmoil that Van Gilder was going through. So really good stuff here. Now the elements of this episode that I didn't enjoy. So the karate chops and the Shatner chop are just incredibly cheesy, okay? <laughs> uh, they simply just aren't believable. Uh, even in the movie Generations, uh, many, many years later, when uh, when Kirk is Shatner chopping Soren, it just isn't believable. It, it was something that Shatner was never able to make it look good or look real, at least in my eyes. I hope you don't mind me poking a little fun at that throughout the series. Also, uh, Kirk's womanizing has a negative flair through the whole series. It thankfully diminishes somewhat when we get into the into the motion pictures, but I really think that a modern audience watching these would be bothered by that. Also, the absence of Scott, Sulu, and Chekhov are noticeable. Overall, though, the episode was really good. The mind meld is, uh, is very, very foundational to the whole series. The scenes were acted out well. I'm giving Dagger of the Mind four out of five Starfleet insignias for awesomeness. Well, I want to thank you for joining me this week as I reviewed a great episode, Dagger of the Mind. And I thoroughly hope you enjoyed it. If you are liking this content, please uh, hit that subscribe button. Also, feel free to leave a comment below. Let me know how you feel about this episode. All I ask is that we remain respectful of each other and that we keep the comments profanity free. I'd like to invite you to join me next week as I review Season 1, Episode 10, titled... The Corbamite Maneuver. Until then, live long and prosper.